Every day we communicate online. We watch videos, we exchange messages, we stream music, and we all know that this is achieved thanks to the internet. But have you ever wondered how does it work? How can computers everywhere in the world communicate to each other almost instantly? Today I'd like to explore with you this incredible thing called the internet. This video is actually divided into two different videos. In the first one, we'll first take a look at how the infrastructure works. We'll see what is a router, what's the role of a modem, and how the whole network looks like. In the second video, we'll take a look at a process called routing. This is what allows one device to communicate with any other device connected to the internet, even if that other device is thousands and thousands of kilometers from you. Okay, let's start with the infrastructure. This is a basic example in which we take two computers on the same room and we connect them to each other through a cable. This is the minimal setup that you can have in order to have two computers communicate to each other. Now, we'll see a bunch of cables and computers in this video, but keep in mind that each cable could be substituted with a Wi-Fi connection, and instead of a computer, we could have a tablet or a phone. Let's change the scenario from two computers to 10 computers. If you wanted to connect all of them, you would need 45 cables or 45 individual connections. You can see how with millions of computers we currently have in the world, this would be impossible. Instead, something we could do is to connect all the computers to a single device called a router. The router job is to deliver a message to the right recipient. So if computer A is sending a message to computer B, the router will make sure that the message goes in the right direction. You can think of a router as a traffic conductor. Data on the internet are the cars, and the conductor's job is to show what's the right way that they should be going. But still, this is not exactly what the internet looks like. We're getting close, but not there yet. The reason is that the world has billions of computers, and it's unthinkable that they are all connected to the same router. Instead, routers can be connected with, guess what, other routers. And this way, we can start talking about different networks communicating together. Network A might consist of all the devices of a company building, that thanks to the router B are connected to the network B. In order to connect routers from different networks, we do not need to set up special cables or special connections, but we can instead take advantages of phone cables. In fact, when the internet was being built, there was a choice to use the existing phone infrastructure to transmit data for the internet too. But in order for computers to communicate over the phone lines, we need a way to convert that information properly. The tool that allows this conversation is called a modem. You can think of the modem as a one of those adapters you buy when you travel to a country that has a different electric plug. Similarly to how adapters work, the modem will translate a signal understood by the computer into a signal that can be understood by the phone line. Finally, every network accessing the internet is connected through an internet service provider. An internet service provider is a company that manages several routers that are part of the same network and are also connected to routers from other providers. Some of the biggest internet service providers are AT&T, Xfinity, or China Network. Thanks to a service provider, when you send data online, if your local network is not connected to the network you're trying to reach, your message will be routed inside a service provider network so that it can have access to all other networks that exist in the world. It will then be sent to the right internet service provider and finally routed to the right address. So let's make sure that everything we got so far is clear. When a device is connected to the internet and it sends some data, there is always going to be a router that will find the right direction of the data. This is our traffic conductor. Then there's going to be a modem that translates those data for the phone cable. This is our adapter. Finally, there is the internet service provider, which is a special network that contains several routers that are connected to other internet service providers. This guarantees that if you're trying to communicate with a device that is not part of your internet service provider, you'll be able to bridge it. So this video is over, but it's technically not yet. 
So make sure you watch the part number two of how the internet works and you can find the link in the description below.